Welcome back, everybody. Today, we are looking at the USS Reliant. And this is a model kit being put back on the shelves by AMT and Round 2. And you can pre-order it right now at Cult TV Man Hobby Shop. Links will be in the description below. Now, the USS Reliant recently was released in the 1-1000 scale ship, which is a small one. But this model kit is the bigger 18-inch version. Now, AMT has really put out two iterations of this model kit, the original one, and then when round two kind of took over AMT, they did release the Reliant with some big improvements and fixes, and I'll go over those in this video. So this is the updated version of the USS Reliant. There's good and there's bad about that update. We'll look at all of it. Let's start off by looking at the box. So right on the cover, we have a very cool finished model. This one was built by James Small, and he does a lot of the model kits uh, for round two so they can have some actual models on their boxes. A very cool illustration there of how good this model can look. Down on the bottom, a couple advertisements for the Enterprise D being re-released in Translucent Clear, the Klingon D7, the K7, and the Bird of Prey, some of those recent Star Trek model kits. There's a link to small artworks. That is, once again, the person who built so many of these model kits for the box art. There's another shot of the ship. Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, USS Reliant. Glued together model kit, definitely not a snap kit. And of course the scale, one five thirty seventh. Okay, um, let me go over this because there was a time when model kits did not care about sci-fi. That classic USS Enterprise model kit was one six fiftieth scale and it was about this overall size. So for quite a while, AMT was calling any of their model kits who were about the same size, 1 650th. It leads to a lot of confusion. If you see a listing for a 1 650th scale USS Reliant, it's really 1 537th. They just put that 650th scale on it so people would know it was about the same size as that classic USS Enterprise. So if you get confused on that, there is no true 650th scale Yosa Reliant. It's really the first iteration of this kit, and it's actually 537th, like the classic refit. That classic refit Enterprise from the movies also, I believe, had the same issue where they released it and they may have called it 650th scale as well. Here we have a look at the decals that come with this kit. You're going to notice a lot of red pinstriping. That's another really kind of interesting note. When they were working on the refit, giving its paint job, they were going to give it a lot more red pinstriping. They want to give it kind of a, a red, white, and blue motif. And if you look at things like some of the early production art of the Enterprise for the motion picture, you'll see a lot more red pinstriping on it. Some of it's carried on to some things like uh, Mr. Scott's Guide to the Enterprise. If you look at that cover art, you can see a lot of red pinstriping that didn't actually make it to the production model for the refit. But when they did the Reliant, they carried on the red pinstriping. So a lot of red pinstriping on the Reliant. Includes full color decal sheet, including the markings shown there. This one has a dome base with metal support rods. The first version of this for AMT did not have a true stand. It had these little plastic cradles uh, that you would set under the uh, nacelles. They were done in clear, but it was just kind of something to keep it up off the ground. Back at the box, we get some alternate views of the ship, and boy, it looks good. 26 pieces, 18 inches long. The Miranda-class starship commandeered by Captain Kirk's fearsome foe, Khan Noonien Singh. Injected in off-white plastic along with clear parts. They say it's off-white. I think I looked at it. It looks pretty white to me. Authentic detail throughout the model. All right, before we unbox this new kit, uh, this is the 1 1000 scale USS Reliant that has been on the shelves recently. And they just re-released the Aztec decals for this little kit. Uh, so those should still be available. Once again, at places like Colt TV Man Hobby Shop, you should be able to pick those up. So this kit has been available in the past couple years. And this, this is a model I was working on 
honestly, probably about 10, 12 years ago, and I kind of shelved, I never finished this, but I'm bringing this out now because this uses the original AMT version of this model kit. So when we look at the differences between the original AMT boxing and this newest one by round two, we'll come back to this kind of project I was on to kind of see some of the differences. And actually looking at this, I after I can't give up on this, I used it for some experiments and panel line washing and different paints and things. But looking at this, I kind of love the Aztec pattern I did on it. I, I wish I'd finished this project because I honestly think this might have been one of the best Aztec patterns I've done on a ship. And I don't believe the USS Reliant really had pearlescent Aztecs. I think it was a couple different shades of gray. I don't think they went, they bothered to do the pearlescent on this again. But man, looking at this old abandoned project, I really love uh, the Aztec I did on it. Um, maybe I'll try and recreate something like that on this new kit. Uh, this was a project where I was kind of doing something a little different, kind of going for a little bit of a Deep Space Nine variety for the Miranda. So I had kind of done some cutouts and clear epoxy to add some extra clear parts. But we'll look at this when we see the new kit and we'll see some of the differences. Uh, one big difference, if you look at the side, this old AMT kit, far too thin. You can see that kind of right here. This is very, very thin. The other thing you'll notice is I did drill out all of these windows. Uh, there were actually no windows in here. What they did to simulate windows, since they didn't really have a tooling that would press in from the side to give an indent, is they did this stair step thing all over the saucer. And if you can see what they did with windows, is at the stair step where they want to have a window, they just kind of cut out the stair step. So that right by my fingernail, that was what they passed off as a window. That was a window. That was a window. So obviously I used those little pilot holes uh, for my drill. And I don't mind showing you this kind of really messy work. It was, it was 12 years ago. I got a little better at it. Uh, you can see right there, that's what they did for a window. They had the stair step and they cut the windows into the stair step. Um, over here on the side, uh, they had, once again, these grid lines really deep on the side here. Those shouldn't have been here. This was at an angle, so they had some better window holes here, uh, but they still weren't accurate. They weren't holes. They weren't windows. And that stair step, you can see that stair step there and kind of the odd cutouts they had for windows there. Um, but overall... Those windows weren't accurate. The stair steps weren't accurate. There's, I mean, there should not be this ridged line all over the edge of the saucer. And overall, the profile was much too thin for the USS Reliant. There were a lot of garage kits that modified this. You could buy entirely new sidewalls and whole correction pieces to make it wider and kind of remove that stair stepping. Um, but this really that was the issue for these old AMT versions of the USS Reliant. All right, let's unbox this as we unbox it. Along the side, we have a lot of shots of the ship from the movie. And of course, it wasn't just in Star Trek II. The Miranda-class ships were reused, uh, especially in Deep Space Nine. They were used all over there, but a lot of good shots of the ship. No full color paint guide or anything on this one. And here are our two halves of the hull. Now the box said molded in off-white. This doesn't look off-white to me. It looks pretty bright white. Um, here's a, a piece of copier paper. They're really honestly pretty close. Try and get the same light on them. Um, yeah, I, I don't really feel... It's kind of brighter than my white backdrop here. I feel this is kind of an honest white plastic. All right, let's look at our new hull. So, and I said there was good and there was bad. So when they updated it and they removed the inaccurate windows, we were left without windows. So there you can see the stair step is gone. It is smoother. The inaccurate windows are gone here. No stair step. 
but that means our saucer now is blank. That's the bad part. The windows are now gone. The good is the stair step is gone. It should be the right depth and height, but you will have to put the windows on yourself. All right, that is kind of our difference in height. You know, it didn't take much to make it a bit more accurate, but you can definitely see uh, that is definitely thicker and higher than on the old AMT kit. Change things around here and try and look at the back. Get these lined up right for us. Yep, definitely taller. And yep, that inaccurate stair step is gone. So overall, the correct proportions are gonna make a good difference on how this looks on your shelf. Now, why does it matter if the ship is in a bright white? Well, let me go back to that old project I had from years ago and light it up. And once again, this was an attempt at lighting years ago, but I did not use any third party clear parts uh, for this model kit. What I did is I left it the clear white and I did clear blue on the outside, just over the white plastic. And here I did some black and clear blue, just once again over that white plastic and bright lights behind it. And I was able to light it just through the white plastic without having to switch it out for any resin or third party pieces. And once again, this was kind of a Deep Space Nine inspired ship. So I did light up inside and outside uh, nacelles. And like I said, I was just playing around. I cut out and did a little bit there. The other reason why bright white is good is because it lets you do kind of that internally lit spotlight for your registry. Uh, this plastic was a little yellower and I think I used warm LEDs instead of cool white. So you can see my spotlight looks kind of orange and my Aztec doesn't look great there. Um, but the clear white will let you do some like those lighting effects, like lighting it up from the inside. So yeah, with the clear white, you'll be able to do a very nice internal spotlight. I think we also call it the Raytheon method as popularized uh, by Ian Lawrence. But yeah, you will not have to buy special parts if you want to make your nacelles glow. Uh, you can just take advantage of that clear white plastic. We have our classic round two dome base and we do get a hollow rod to light the ship if that's what you'd like to do. Here's our sprue of clear parts. Of course you get your impulse crystals. You get little girls for the impulse engines. Uh, clear shuttle bays. Yeah, I, I don't know that there's much point in those being clear but they're clear if you'd like them to be. And then this is cool. This is a clear part to help you light the uh, kind of lower sensor dome. You have a cool piece there. Then a couple more of your nav lights are done in clear. Oh, and these, these are those little stand pieces I was telling you about, just little clear parts that you would set the model on instead of having an actual stand. So I think they go like this, lays down, and then your nacelle is just kind of right there. I think the dome base is much, much better but I definitely like this clear piece. So there's that clear piece down here. Um, yeah, I didn't mask it off well, but that's a very nice clear piece to help you light that sensor dome. And here, this is that white plastic, or on this older kit, it wasn't quite white, which is why this lower sensor dome looks kind of yellow. Uh, but overall, uh, it's kind of a fun ship to do some cool lighting like that. A lot of these parts are pretty familiar to you guys if you've ever built this Reliant kit. It's been out a while, so good chance you have. Uh, one thing that's nice is up to the roll bar, it is done in two parts, so you can easily hide some magnet wire in there. The Reliant might have been the first time I used magnet wire to squeeze it between these two pylons. Lots of room here if you want to light your photon torpedoes. Yep, pylons are done in two halves, so easy to run some wire down to those nacelles and light those up. Here's our nacelle, yeah, nice molding, nice and smooth. This is not like the uh, 537 scale refit, which is now has that brick texture over the entire thing. 
very nice clean nacelles. Here's the back shuttle bay. Here's the back of the engineering hull. So you can see these are where those clear parts go. There's the parts for the impulse engines. There's where the clear shuttle bays would go. Some more pylon pieces. Once again, let's look and see if we can look at the change in depth between these two model kits. Here's our other nacelle. The other part of the torpedo launcher. There is our bridge. There's that lower planetary sensor dome. Parts for the phaser turrets. Here's our forward and rear photon torpedo launchers. It's too bad those aren't in clear, but it's easy enough to uh, drill out a hole in each of those and then just uh, fill it up with some, some clear glue or epoxy if you want those to light up. Pretty decent detail on them. All right, we also got an advertisement for Auto World showing a lot of the other products that Round 2 offers. Auto World is, of course, their official online shop. Here are our instructions. It's not an overly complicated model, so the instructions can be pretty simple. And here we have our paint and decal instructions. So different color recommendations. And this is kind of old school. Not like the full color drawings have been doing a lot in the Star Trek kits. So this is where you put all of those pennants and pen striping, front and the back. Here's our decal sheet. Starfleet pennants for the nacelles. Shuttle Bay 1, Shuttle Bay 2, USS Reliant. There's our registry. There's our big registry for the top of the saucer. And of course, lots of red pen stripes. A basic but good decal sheet. Well, that's my unboxing and first look in a long time at the USS Reliant, the nice 18 inch sized version of this model kit. And I like a lot about it. Uh, maybe I just like the USS Reliant a lot. Uh, maybe I just want to kind of get back to building one when I gave up on the last kind of big version I built. But I'm excited about this model kit. Now, I, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's a shame that there's no window solution included in the model kit. It would have been nice if the, we got decals for the windows. Uh, since they're not molded on, and they've done decals for windows on other Star Trek model kits. Or, barring that, I was hoping maybe they would have put a, temp a template in the instructions that you could cut off and use to like mark on the model kit where the window should go. As it is, they're just blank, and it's kind of up to you. Now, maybe somebody's already made a printable template you can do online. I know there is a brass window marking set available, uh, a photo watch set, I believe, once again, made by Paragraphics. Uh, but I was hoping there'd be kind of a something you didn't have to buy separately for it. Uh, let me know if somebody does have that solution already made, where there's a printable version that you can cut out tape on the model and then mark so you can do the windows yourself uh, or if the brass etched set is the only good way to do the windows but outside of the window issue which is definitely solvable by experienced modelers uh, it's an exciting kit to work on the uss reliant is a fan favorite it's a great adversary ship and really the reliant it's the first time they designed a Starfleet ship that wasn't the Enterprise or just using the Enterprise Studio model being called a different ship. This is kind of the first time they showed us this extra configuration with different nacelles and gave us a secondary Starfleet ship. And of course, this lineage has been carried on to all sorts of ships, the Nebula, the Cerritos, with those underslung nacelles. So definitely an important ship in Star Trek history. Thank you guys for watching this unboxing video. Hopefully it gives you a good idea of what this kit is about. And thank you guys for following the channel.